is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 chevy equinox courtesy of april chevrolet in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because in my personal opinion this is a good looking suv you got some new colors for the 2024 model year as well and essentially this one is competing with the honda crv toyota rav4 mazda cx50 just to name a few so ultimately this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 equinox first one being the ls starting at twenty nine thousand five hundred ninety five dollars then you have the lt for thirty two thousand four ninety rs for thirty three thousand nine forty five and lastly the premier being the one we are in today starting at thirty four thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars yes that pricing is a little bit more than the 2023 model year but the reason being for 2023 front wheel drive actually came standard but for 2024 all-wheel drive is now coming standard for every single trim level across the board so that's pretty cool i do like that but powering the beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 175 horsepower 203 pound feet of torque power is going to be sent to all four wheels through a six speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately eight seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 30 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel so you get to save a little bit of money there but now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 chevy equinox here up to speed all right in three two one go Yeet. a little bit of turbo lag but it's loud <laughs> there it is all right, so once it gets to like third gear, it really starts kicking in, but it is kind of loud, I will say that. And there was a little bit of turbo lag at the beginning, but that's traditionally what you will find with turbocharged four cylinders, unless they have like a mild hybrid system, which a lot of vehicles are going with now if they are turbocharged four cylinders. So Chevy, maybe that's something to consider in the future, but it should get the job done. It's one of those things where the more you drive a vehicle, the more you really get to know it. So you shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway because you'll get used to it. But then touching on braking, because of course that is equally important up front you will find 16 inch ventilated front discs and the back 16 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes as we pulled up to this red light here that comes in at 121 feet as far as braking feel goes it's 100 perfectly fine so it's pretty much as you would expect it's not a super firm braking feel but it's definitely not a soft braking feel either so honestly to me it feels just right but that touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back four link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes in my short little test drive here today it actually hasn't been that bad i've been going over some pretty punishing roads here in york and uh it's okay it, it's definitely not giving me any issues as far as steering feel goes that's probably the first thing i noticed this is definitely a heavier weight to the steering without a doubt more so than most suvs that i drive which i like i do like the heavier weight to it it's one of those things where it more instantly points you in the direction that you want to go so i'm definitely a big fan of that because most suvs give you a loosey-goosey steering feel and that's not it's not as fun to drive honestly so i do like the steering feel very heavy weight to it but then touching on uh cabin noise as we are going 40 miles per hour right now you get a little bit of road noise i will say that but uh it's not something that would personally bother me so i probably shouldn't bother you either i'm just saying but the touching on rear visibility i will say this is a smaller rear view mirror than i'm traditionally used to seeing in suvs for whatever reason i feel like i don't know it's just a smaller rear view mirror maybe it's because it has this giant black frame on it uh, i wouldn't have minded maybe a frameless rear view mirror but it does seem smaller but either way rear visibility is perfectly fine you're not going to have any issues there with the shape of the equinox it's definitely perfectly fine there so anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 chevy equinox all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 chevy equinox finished in sterling gray metallic in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one but speaking of there are a couple new colors for the 2024 equinox one of them being riptide blue cool name and lakeshore blue also a cool name good job chevy for coming up with some cool names there but anyways let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the bin first character is the number three indicating that the equinox is built and assembled 
in Mexico, in case you were curious. But starting up front here, LED headlights actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You gotta love that with LED daytime running lights. You do get the automatic feature with those and automatic high beams as well. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. That is pretty cool. And then of course, down to the corners there, you are looking at fog lights, which comes standard on the Premier only. And also wanted to show you guys, you guys can see that nice front mount intercooler down at the very bottom of that front grille as well. So that is pretty cool. But anyways, good looking front end. Like I said at the very beginning of the video, I do like the looks of the Equinox still. So absolutely no issues there, but now, Let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since you are around to the side of this one, roof rails are going to come on the RS and Premier trim level. And by the way, I do want to mention in doubt, we do have the red line package that goes for $895. So if you were curious about all of the red accents, like on the wheels, like on the Equinox lettering, on the side mirrors, that is because we got the red line package. So yeah, anyways, Equinox lettering found on those front doors. So that is typical Chevy fashion there. I definitely like that. Power adjustable heated side mirrors coming with all trim levels with integrated turn signals on the premier trim level only they will be body colored side mirrors for the lt trim level and up but then for the ls it's going to be a matte black finish in case you were curious but i do like the gloss black finish surrounding the windows as well as on the door handles and again that's all that red line package that we have with us here today but now let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel setup 17 inch aluminum alloys for the ls and lt trims 19 inch aluminum alloys for the rs and yes in case you were curious the rs is the sportier trim level of the bunch and then 18 inch aluminum alloys for the premier and again red line specific alloys if you go with that red line package but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of the equinox all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper if you're looking for the led tail lights it will come on the rs and premier trim levels only otherwise you are going to get the halogen bulbs for the other trim levels so a little better illumination in the back at night for the rsn premiere but you also do have that all-wheel drive badging coming standard across the board since all-wheel drive is now standard of course and just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet it is tucked away underneath wouldn't have minded if they have exposed that or built it into the rear bumper or something i think that would have looked better but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Equinox, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate for the LS and LT trim levels, power tailgate for the RS, and then a hands-free power tailgate for the premier trim level that we have today. There's of course a button on the key fob, there's a button on the tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 29.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down. There's actually some levers in the cargo area as well to actually fold down those rear seats, which you don't always find which is pretty cool to see but with those rear seats folded down that bumps up to 63.9 cubic feet there's actually a 12 volt power outlet in that cargo area of course you have cargo lighting there's grocery bag hooks tie down anchors and uh, if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you actually will find in-floor storage as well and actually a good bit of it so that was pretty cool to see but then make your way up to the rear legroom 39.9 inches that's a ton of space for reference i mean even six feet tall this is me sitting behind my own driving position here there's a rear center armrest with cup holders for all trim levels across the board rear ventilation for all trim levels as well dual rear usb charging ports you gotta love that heated rear seats though for the premier trim level and not just heated rear seats this is crazy you guys heated backrest as well so a lot of times even in luxury manufacturers you'll find the heated rear seats but you won't find the heated backrest which is kind of crazy to see in uh in an equinox so i love that but anyways also we actually do have a 120 volt power outlet you guys can see that at the very bottom as well so that was pretty cool to find but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable front seats for the ls trim level cloth seats for the ls lt and rs trims but then a perforated leather for our premiere that we have today 
eight-way power driver's seat for the LT trim level and up, heated front seats for the RSM Premier, then ventilated front seats are gonna be optional for the Premier. We actually do have that option, so that's pretty cool. But anyways, as far as seat comfort goes, it was actually really good. Reason being is the lumbar support was really adjustable. That isn't always the case. A lot of times when manufacturers put lumbar support on their seats, it's slightly adjustable, but with the Equinox, it's really adjustable. So I was a big fan of that, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the RS Premier and then optional on the LT if you wanted the leather wrapped steering wheel. And it is actually heated on the Premier. I've had that heated steering wheel on the whole time because it's kind of cold out today. So big fan of that. 10 to 2 grips are perfectly fine on the thicker side, actually. So I like that too. But to make our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Bowtie logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock that remote start coming standard and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. We'll find your fuel information up top and then the digital screen down to the bottom there, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. So it gives you things like radio information. There's a compass up there, Bluetooth information, a bunch of settings, of course, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer, chirp A, chirp A, so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges so that was pretty cool to see but then make our way to overall interior quality panoramic power sunroof for the lt trim level and up i love that it's available on all of those trim levels so that goes all the way into the back so you gotta love that Overhead sunglass holder for the LT trim level and up as well. Universal home remote for the premier trim level. So you got the garage door openers uh, for up to three different garage doors there. Dual zone climate control for the RS and premier. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. Wireless phone charger for the premier trim level that's located just in front of the shifter. So gotta love that. Also just in front of the shifter since we're here. 12 volt power outlet, a bunch of charging ports of course. To the right of the shifter, you got your cup holders, electromechanical parking brake behind that. And within the center armrest, there's actually a decent amount of storage there and you got an led light within there as well and a couple charging ports so overall uh interior quality was really really good minus one thing and you guys know i always grape on this if you watch my videos is surrounding the cup holders there's a matte black plastic so chevy was doing so good too except for that if they could just turn that plastic into some kind of a texturized design maybe you can keep it plastic but just the matte black plastic there's there's no thought and it just seems like it was overlooked so i i hate that that's just my thing i don't know but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here seven inch color touchscreen display for the ls rs and lt trims but then the premiere is going to give you what you were looking at which is an eight inch color touchscreen display bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Now that's something that you don't always get in the competition. That comes standard for all trim levels, by the way. So you gotta love that. Factory navigation system is gonna be optional on the LT trim level and up. And of course you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound system, there's uh, there's one and a half of them. The reason I say that is because six speaker sound system does come standard on all trim levels, but there is an optional sound system, which is a seven speaker bow sound system that's optional on the RS and Premier trim level only. And actually, we do have that option with us here today, of course. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of our Bose sound system that we have with us here today. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. Nothing wrong with that. The bass, the bass was pretty insane. I will say that. And Bose, you guys know Bose. It's a very reputable, uh, very reputable company. They've been around for decades now. I don't know how long they've been around, but I, I've had them in my, uh, I had an Infiniti G35 back in the day. So clarity was pretty darn good as well. Seven speakers is, uh, it's just okay, honestly, but the bass, really really good but anyways last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the equinox in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board since we have the premiere of course we've also got that panoramic view monitor there to the left giving you the bird's eye view we're letting you know what is completely all around you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard automatic emergency braking a following distance indicator forward collision alert front pedestrian braking and lane keep assist with lane departure warning then as well so 
Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Equinox, again, I do like the design. I think it's a very good looking SUV. So definitely a fan of that. I like the wireless connectivity with the wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And it's so weird that most manufacturers still don't do that. You still have to connect your phone via USB cable to the actual car to do that. So the wireless connectivity is a big win for me at least. Rear seat legroom is great. I thought the rear, rear seat passengers in general are pretty darn spoiled in this thing because not only do they get the heated rear seats, at least in our premiere, but also the heated to backrests which you just never see so that is pretty cool overall as far as uh, room for improvement goes this thing it is kind of slow um, I think it would at least benefit from a mild hybrid system which would give it a little more punch off the line and kind of reduce that initial turbo lag so that's something that I see Volvo and BMW and Mercedes-Benz doing and gradually it's starting to make its way down to the non-luxury brands as well but I think that's something to consider in the future maybe and the other thing is this is probably with the exception of the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay this is probably the most untechy car that I've reviewed in a while and I just say that because of course there's no digital gauges and it doesn't have to have digital gauges so long as it has a relatively attractive uh, analog gauge cluster and I think the gauges are kind of on the boring side honestly but the other thing is the infotainment screen um, while it is relatively easy to use uh, seven and eight inch screens are definitely on the smaller side of things these days that's usually that's something that like a 2017 vehicle would have not necessarily a 2024 vehicle uh, mostly you're seeing 12.3 inch screens these days for the most part um so i don't know i'm just saying but anyways let me know what you guys think of the equinox in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see different spy shots before the vehicles actually get to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>